Okay, here's a nice little concise section on sum to infinity. This applies to geometric progression, so leading on from the previous uh, lesson. So I want you to have a think about this sequence. One half, quarter, eighth, as you carry on, that is um, being reduced, uh, multiplied by a half as you go along. So we have our first term is r and our common ratio is a half. Now what happens if you try to find the sum of that sequence as n gets very big? So we're thinking about as n tends towards infinity, if you added up all of those terms, what would it get closer to? Hopefully you can see quite easily there, if you did 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth and so on, that's going to get you closer and closer to 2. So as n tend towards, tends towards infinity, the sum of our first n te terms tends towards 2. So thinking about our formula for the sum of the first n terms, it looks like this. Now what happens if r is small, so between minus 1 and 1, i.e. A, a fraction, a proper fraction, not a top heavy one, then n is also very, very big. So n is huge, we'll actually call it infinity. What happens then? So thinking about our r to the n part in that formula, if r is a, a fraction, something between minus 1 and 1, or a decimal, um, if, you multi if you put that to the power of something very, very big, it's going to make r to the n become incredibly tiny. And if you're talking about going up to infinity, it's going to become so tiny that we can actually say that it's zero. So our sum to infinity formula can then be simplified to look like this. And this only works if the modulus of r is less than 1. So it's it makes r small enough for this to work. It won't work if, if um, r is a big number because then that um, term in our uh, sum formula won't become zero. So this only works if the modulus of r is less than one. Now you don't need to reproduce how to get to this formula. It helps you to understand where it came from. You just need to know how to use the formula. Okay, so examples. Here's a uh, geometric progression. We're going to find the sum to infinity. So a is 81 r is a third, and our sum to infinity, putting it into our formula of a over 1 minus r, we get 121.5. Okay, example number two, we've got a gp with a common ratio of minus 3 fifths, sum to infinity is 12, we're going to find the first and the fifth terms. So our sum to infinity looks like this, we're told that it equals 12, and our um, ratio is minus 3 fifths, so 1 minus negative 3 fifths is 8 fifths, Rearrange that and we get a equals 19.2. So our first term is 19.2. Our fifth term will be 19.2 times our ratio to the power of 4. And that gives us 2.48832. So this is a simple little formula that um, can actually be incredibly useful. It's often used in questions about exponential growth and decay involving um, interest rates, increasing, increases in uh, values or decreases in values or radioactive decay and things like that.